Hello everyone. Welcome to another quick video on uh, looking at connectivity in planes. Now this is a really good picture which actually shows uh, the different kind of UAVs and satellites and plane and what height do they really fly at. So if you look at a plane, uh, generally it flies uh, when it's uh, completely high up in the air. It flies at a height of around uh, between 9 to 11.5 kilometers. In comparison, a uh, satellite is uh, very, very far away. It's at around 35,786 kilometers away. So this picture on the left hand side, uh, it just shows the different kind of orbits uh, the satellites can actually uh, go in. Uh, so you have the LEO satellites or the low earth orbit satellites that fly at uh, a height of roughly between 180 to 2000 kilometers. Then you have the MEO or medium earth orbit uh, which is 2000 to 35,700 kilometers and the geosynchronous uh, which it shows here as uh, 35,700 kilometers but the actual uh, height is 35768 kilometers. Uh, the reason uh, the reason most of the satellites used for communication in case of uh, planes or uh, like you know when you have satellite connectivity satellite broadband is geo satellites because they are at the same position so you have antennas which are pointing at these satellites and these antennas don't have to move because these satellites are always in the same location in comparison uh, mio and leo satellites they would keep on changing positions. So first of all, you would need a lot of these satellites, right, to provide continuous coverage uh, all the time. So MEO and LEO satellites, uh, they are not necessarily. So LEO right now is generally used for all other things like, you know, this uh, uh, Earth observation and things like that. Whereas MEO, they can be used for providing communications, but uh, you have to have more complicated uh, circuitry uh, to basically keep receiving from MEO satellites all the time because they are not at the same location. So let's look at uh, uh, Wi-Fi uh, on the planes. Like how does uh, how does the things really work? How do you get connectivity on a plane? So you have something called a ground station, uh, which is uh, like uh, providing connectivity to the satellite, uh, and this ground station uh, is connected to the internet so you have like fiber lines running from the ground station to the uh, operators the satellite operators uh, data center or the, the the where all the servers which provide connectivity to the outside world are uh, then of course you have the satellite up uh, in the sky that uh, so we are talking about the geo satellites so which are three five seven six eight kilometers away and you need some kind of a receiver, uh, antenna uh, and a receiver uh, on the plane uh, to actually receive from the satellites. Uh, now this receiver have to sort of track where the satellite is. So it's not a very, very simple antenna like you would have uh, in your house if you're providing connectivity, having satellite broadband. So it's slightly more complex. And you can also have some kind of a cellular uh, antenna or a small cell on a plane uh, to provide uh, cellular connectivity. So this is a, a picture uh, which basically shows like, you know, if you have cellular connectivity, so you of course, so in, in this particular plane, it's receiving in the front, whereas in the previous one, the satellite antenna was located at the back. So different planes uh, can have different configurations. It's not really that important. Um, so you have the satellite antenna here. And then there are uh, these uh, cables, the leaky feeders, which run all the way uh, to the end of the plane or somewhere on the plane where you have uh, like a small cell. It could be a pico cell or a, uh, like, you know, just a small femtocell kind of thing, which will provide connectivity, uh, cellular connectivity in the plane. Uh, you also have leaky feeders which actually provide uh, Wi-Fi connectivity uh, to everyone or, or even cellular connectivity. So basically they can act as antennas. So what does connectivity on the plane look like? Uh, you know, so you can see 
the download speeds like you know they are not great and the upload speeds are even poor right but the thing which is really important is uh, the ping times which are really really high so like you know here i've shown 720 and 794 uh, so again th these are some of the pictures which uh, people share the speed test pictures which people share on twitter uh, either with me or in general just to show like you know what speed test from a plane looks like so i've just taken it uh, from from twitter so why what exactly is the latency and the ping time right uh, because the geo satellites are really high up right uh, we, we discussed it 35768 to be precise uh, so if you want to connect so your phone actually connects to the uh, the satellite antenna and the satellite antenna relays your signal to the satellite and the satellite relays that signal to the ground station and the ground station sends it to the internet so this is like uh, in one direction and you would have exactly the same thing in the other direction so latency is defined as the time it takes for a source to send a packet data to a receiver so in simple terms it's half of your ping time because ping time you basically send a packet that goes all the way to the ping server and then the ping server sends it back to your phone and that's the actual time it takes for the ping packet to go from your phone to the server and back so latency is in very simple terms it's half of ping time so let's calculate uh, uh, the latency and ping time for a connect, for a plane connectivity so we know the speed of light is uh, 3 into 10 raised to 8 meters per second or 3 into 10 raised to 5 kilometers per second uh, and of course uh, rf signals travel the same speed as light uh, the ground station to satellite connectivity uh, will basically give us a 120 millisecond roughly. Uh, so, and satellite to plane would be another 120 millisecond approximately because the plane is just like a roughly 10 kilometers high, right? Whereas the satellite is like uh, 35,768 kilometers away. So it won't make much difference. So this is just a rough, a rough calculation. And uh, if we look at ground station to the server, uh, that would be approximately 10 millisecond. Uh, plane, uh, once it's uh, the, you, the, set, the satellite antenna in the plane receives the signal uh, from there to the Wi-Fi approximately, like, you know, processing delays is another 50 millisecond. So we are looking at a latency of approximately 300 millisecond. This is very rough calculation for a geo, uh, geo, geo stationary or geosynchronous satellite. Uh, and the ping time would be double of that. So we are looking at uh, at least 600 millisecond approximately. And um, this is actually um, quite a high time. So in the pictures we looked earlier, the, uh, the speed test pictures, we saw 720 millisecond and 794 uh, millisecond, uh, the ping times. Uh, recently, uh, a friend, uh, Azar, he shared this picture, uh, which he uh, did a speed test on a GoGo Wi-Fi, which is offered uh, to free, free to T-Mobile customers, uh, uh, OnePlus customers. And, uh, when he uh, calculated it, even though you can see the download and the upload speeds are really poor, the ping time is roughly 626 millisecond. So it's not very far from our theoretical calculation of 600 millisecond. Uh, there are additional, uh, 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 there are additional uh, optimizations which sometimes satellite operators do to actually reduce this, uh, this ping times and the latency and they can get it very very close to 600 millisecond if they try too hard so you know so the plane connectivity is good and it's becoming more common some of them offer it for free some of them uh, charge their customers uh, depends on the package and the ticket price etc but uh, what some of the people some of the operators uh, are working on is actually to improve uh, the the data speeds and the latency and one of these initiatives uh, here in Europe is uh, by Deutsche Telekom and Inmarsat and they are doing uh, they have partnered together 
to deliver what uh, is being known as the European Aviation Network. And in, in this particular thing, they have also partnered with uh, Thales who are doing uh, some of this uh, implementation uh, for this delivering this uh, European Aviation Network. So let's look at a promotional video. Uh, I, I really like this promotional video. Wait till the later part of this video. It basically shows what they are trying to do. As Europe's leading telco, we connect our customers on the ground. We roll out high quality networks to provide them with seamless T connectivity at home, at work, on the move, at the airport, everywhere. Now we take our mission to new heights and set out to reach the last untapped market, the European airspace. With an average of 22,500 flights a day and 500 million passengers per year, it's one of the busiest airspaces in the world. Deutsche Telekom develops this huge market in an industry pioneering partner initiative with Inmarsat, the world's best satellite provider. We build and deliver the European Aviation Network, a completely new and innovative satellite and terrestrial network, the first of its kind in Europe. Our ground-based superfast 4G LTE network is the perfect fit for the extremely dense European airspace. It will enable high-speed in-flight connectivity for the entire European airspace, ensuring the best customer experience, making Europe stronger, creating a Europe with no connectivity borders, on the ground and now even in the sky. So, I have to mention here, this is a very ambitious uh, uh, plan and approach and once it succeeds, uh, I won't be surprised to see it being replicated uh, in other parts of the world. And the thing is, if you really want to provide a good seamless connectivity, you need to have it over a large area. So like, uh, you know, uh, like big countries like uh, US or Russia, Australia, uh, right, and China, they can do it easily. But uh, in Europe, because, you know, the countries are really not that big, so you have to have it European complete uh, European solution uh, to have like a really good uh, solution in place. So the way uh, they would provide this uh, connectivity is uh, uh, they will use a 2 uh, by 15 megahertz S band spectrum. Uh, so 2 by 15 megahertz, uh, of course, most of you would know it's the FDD, right? So 15 megahertz up, 15 megahertz down. Uh, and this will be used by Deutsche Telekom uh, to complement uh, the coverage uh, through the ground network, which is uh, via the satellite. Uh, so complementing the satellite uh, connectivity via the ground network. And what they claim is uh, they can get uh, speeds of up to 75 Mbps uh, with the same latency as LTE network. Because in general, uh, like, you know, when you have your phones connect to a LTE base station, it's a, uh, on an average, you can say it's around like, you know, uh, one or two kilometers away in this case the planes would be at a height of 10 kilometers but it won't make that much of a difference so instead of getting let's say uh, 30 millisecond latency you might get like 40 millisecond latency or 50 millisecond latency but it won't be really that big a deal so how would the spectrum management work uh, with the european aviation network so uh, there is a satellite, right? There is a ground station. And this communication from ground station to satellite is the earth to space communications. Even though you can say like, hey, you are also doing uh, space to earth. But generally this is referred to as earth to space communications. Um, then you have the plane and the satellite provides communication to the plane. So this is known as space to earth communication. Actually, it, it's not just for plane. It's also for... Uh, connectivity to the homes and things like that from satellite connectivity from satellite to anywhere down is the space to earth communication and uh, what the European aviation network is trying to do is it's trying to create like a coverage from ground uh, to the plane uh, so it would use the same spectrum which the ground station uses okay so it will have to ensure that uh, this uh, this uh, beaming of signals uh, from uh, the ground to the planes doesn't interfere with the with the ground 
uh, earth to space communication because this could be disastrous that could if there is interference that could cause issues for everyone so it will use the same spectrum but it will have to try something uh, really clever so the initial the intention is right now is to use the same 2 by 15 megahertz pair uh, for communication each, in each direction and if you're wondering uh, what the earth station look like it looks like something like this right so you have really really uh, large disk uh, depending on the frequency the higher the frequency the smaller the disk size so if you see a really large disk that like the one in the center that means it's uh, for lower frequency so probably for uh, one for s band it would be using uh, one of these uh, really large antennas to provide a reliable coverage and transmitting at a really really high power right so this is to ensure that actually uh, nothing interferes so all the signal it receives from the satellite and all the signal it sends to the satellite is actually a uh, really uh, good signal. So that's about it. A uh, very nice simple video, uh, small video. I hope it's uh, not too long. Uh, that actually explains connectivity in the plane. And uh, uh, let's keep a, a watch on how these things develop. Uh, I'm very confident that in a the next year we will start uh, seeing uh, the European aviation network functioning and then we can actually see uh, how good is it like does it meet its promises uh, or like you know it is just one of those technologies that doesn't really deliver what uh, it claimed it will deliver uh, we'll have to just wait and see and uh, if you like this video uh, please subscribe to our channel and uh, uh, we'll speak next time thank you